I divide my talk into the following parts. Uh, first, the concept uh, and the description of the characteristics of the uh, sustainable vertical city. I will also bring you uh, to review uh, the different uh, stages of development and a trend uh, of urban agglomerations in China, and also integration strategy of a sustainable vertical urban group uh, and the case studies. Finally, summary. First, let's look at vertical city. As we know, the conventional horizontal city actually went through a very lengthy period of development in history. It consisted of many elements. If we look at the traditional cities in China, uh, you look at the Song Dynasty kind of a painting. This is a very famous painting. During Song Dynasty, according to this painting, it depicted a very harmonious and idealistic kind of a city view. So you can find exchange of commodities, on top of which, more importantly, people are gathered in this urban town, where people were, for example, engaged in social, uh, you know, networking uh, and activities. So people had the needs uh, to meet their social uh, kind of uh, needs. In uh, this slide, this is like a vertical city. As a matter of fact, so uh, we actually are trying to develop vertically, and uh, we go up high uh, in the sky, and uh, you know maximize the space uh, vertically. So this is like an uh, energy uh, to depict the nowadays uh, skyscrapers. So as we can see. As a matter of fact, uh, it has already included multiple functionalities that a city is able to deliver, like the economic activities that a city usually uh, is related to, and also interpersonal exchanges in a space where such exchanges take place. In, in addition, there are more elements that we think very important to a city. They are all included in this kind of a model. So for conventional horizontal city, actually, as I already mentioned, it already went through a lengthy period of development in history. If we look at like uh, the Howard kind of a, a farm-based city, uh, and also uh, the uh, right uh, theory, uh, they already laid a good foundation for example, for independent functional zoning. And we also have uh, uh, some other, you know, kind of uh, classics to describe the interaction among different uh, functional zones in the city. And uh, so we have really the blended configuration of multiple functionalities that a city is able to deliver. So, you know, in today's world, that you know the skyscrapers really uh, need to play its due part. Of course, uh, as the city is evolving at a high speed, we have the increasing uh, you know population, a uh, technical uh, progress, and also the uh, you know kind of uh, efficiency of uh, energy utilization. All those are different motivations behind our efforts, trying to really uh, develop uh, vertically instead of only horizontally. So as we are developing along the way, as we transition from horizontal expansion uh, or sprawl to urban development, and uh, we can identify some characteristics throughout the development cycle. On the early stage, people were committed to constructing a lot of uh, man-made or artificial constructs. Uh, and uh, when we have uh, skyscrapers, yeah, we can really unleash uh, some of the uh, potential of the vertical space. Uh, we built like the uh, kind of a rooftop garden, and uh, we, uh, you know, have the basement and underground spaces. So people are now trying to go back to the origin of nature in seeking for harmony between people and nature. Uh, we think that this kind of a uh, skyscraper cluster uh, is really a very important kind of a factor, uh, you know, to uh, make sure that we can have harmony between people and nature so we can sustain our development going forward. Then we can uh, look at the trajectory of the uh, development of uh, Chinese cities as they were trying to transition from horizontal uh, sprawl to uh, vertical development. Uh, we have uh, five uh, phases. Uh, first uh, stage uh, started in 1840, you know, 54, 1854, uh, trying to learn lessons from the Western world. Uh, later on, we also have like the gestation period, exploratory stage, and also the taking off stage. 
after 2008. Of course, uh, in 19th century, uh, you look at like the bond in Shanghai and also Guangzhou uh, Baiyun Hotel, and also uh, during uh, those kind of uh, you know colonial period, uh, actually. There were already some beginning of the development of a high buildings, but back then the high buildings was only have a height of 80 meters, which were nothing compared to today's skyline. But those cities did go through different phases of development, so a westernization, gestation, infancy, groping, and a rapid development since 2008. So this slide shows you the distribution map of urban complexes or hopscots completed in key Chinese cities. Over the past three decades or so, the Chinese cities have already shown a very robust pattern of development uh, as far as the you know skyscrapers uh, in urban complexes are concerned. Uh, we have like the generation one uh, you know Guomao complex in Beijing. Uh, we also have really a great deal of such urban clusters and uh, hopscots, so to speak, across this country. So this is a slide that shows you uh, the situation of different cities, the number of such large-scale comprehensive urban hopscots. And uh, this slide uh, on the left side shows you the quantities of uh, vertical urban agglomerations in China in different periods. And on the right side, it shows you the construction size of uh, vertical urban agglomerations in China in different periods. So we have increasing number of different functions that those complexes deliver. And sometimes, you know, during uh, one cluster or inside one cluster, we have uh, several uh, buildings that are under construction simultaneously. Therefore, this kind of a skyscraper cluster uh, really is able to deliver more and more uh, functions to the city, uh, especially after 2008. Uh, we uh, really have a, a new round of development uh, of the uh, vertical urban clusters. Uh, we had over a hundred such kind of uh, urban clusters comprising of those uh, super high buildings. You know, in Beijing, you know, the total number of such clusters is already over 40 for zero, uh, you know, since 2008. And these kind of uh, urban clusters really shows more s sophisticated and a complicated spatial topography. And uh, you know, some of the buildings are even connected with one another, and uh, therefore uh, they are really brought into a better play uh, as far as their functions, uh, you know, in the city are concerned. Its development trends are f reflected in the following. First of all, we believe these urban agglomerations in China are becoming more diversified. Height is no longer the only stakeyard to measure a vertical city. Secondly, the trend of transformation from single high-rise buildings to multifunctional, multiplex, and agglomerated building groups. And a third trend is, going, is becoming more comprehensive. For example, more than a decade ago, we worked with some to develop this Jinmao Tower. In the past, it was more about single super tall buildings. But now, if we look at the new trend, we pay more attention to not just the space within one tall building, but the connection with the rest of the city, the rest of the society. It's more about high efficiency of the public space. And the fourth trend is that we have more attention to ecology, energy efficiency, intelligence, emission, and also the rational attitude rather than paying so much attention to the construction technologies. We are making people's lives more comfortable. And a fifth trend is that these super tall structures are no longer just landmarks of a city. They are more connected with the cultural heritage and sustainable development of the city. In this process, we believe vertical urban agglomerations are undertaking more responsibilities and offering more functions for the city. So this phrase is from Fanny Horister, an American writer from 1920s. And this author first talked about the vertical city to talk about 
the lifestyle of different social classes in big cities, but then it was borrowed. This phrase was borrowed by the architectural world to, to describe these vertical and super tall structures. They are about agglomeration of the big buildings, and they are about the comprehensively planned multiple super tall structures that offer different functions for the city, and they are the conglomerate of big buildings. Such trends and such transformations are evident. Like my organization, I, as I see architecture in recent years has participated in different projects, and we can see that in the vertical urban agglomerations, we are paying more attention to the functionality and efficiency of the city. As we can see in this slide, after year 2000, our projects paid more attention to the functionality of the cities. As the next graph shows you, it's more about the penetration of public transportation, inspire, inspiration from cultural and historical heritages, and the technologies are shifting from single structure to agglomerations of different structures, and they play a comprehensive role in the city as a whole. So this slide is also about the projects we have done, and we believe it ha it is close. We believe they are closely associated with the cities. They are about the agglomerations in the cities. When we develop such super tall buildings, they play a role in the city. They offer functions in the city. They have public transportation. They create public spaces for the city, and they are structures that need to be used to be enjoyed by the general public. As we design such projects, we believe a healthy vertical urban agglomeration needs to be more integrated. We need to have more research and more implementation about integration. During the designing stage, we need to have a special Com special elements such as recombination, low carbon, sharing, connection, and inheritance, for example. These are the things we need to do when we design such agglomerations. And of course, we need to have good management and administration, especially in a country like China, where the development is very fast. It has to be guided by the government and must have sophisticated management teams and models. These are essential elements for success of such agglomerations. So first, about recombination, it means complete a complete collection of urban functions. It makes the agglomeration more dynamic. A good combination of functions can serve the public well. So by having diversified and mutually supplementary functions, when I talk about mutually supplementary, I mean in terms of energy supply and so on, we need to think about, say, for example, how many percent of residents, how many percent of office, and how many percent of hotels. There must be an optimized combination and if you look at this whole region as a whole. So based on the background of the region, you can understand how different functions support each other to satisfy the needs of the local population so that this agglomeration will stay dynamic and prosperous. And about connection, it means orderly and efficient transportation. A good agglomeration needs to be well connected with other parts of the city, especially the connection with the public transportation system. In terms of the space use, it may include underground walk, the overground space, near ground space, and also air connections. Such connections also means that 
it should be effectively connected to other public spaces, for example, parks and other greeneries and entertainment, shopping malls, and so on. That is to say, the urban agglomeration needs to be connected to a broader public space. More people need to be able to go into the super tall structure. And about sharing, it means that it's for the public. It's not for a certain group of people. It should benefit as many people as possible, the general public as a whole. That is to say, we hope this super tall buildings should be free to enter and free to exit for everybody. They should be the public space, part of the city. And during the planning, we need to think about these factors. And they play a role in the society, in the city. And by sharing the public space, we need to have good interconnectivity of the super tall building and the rest of the society and provide dynamic and relevant places so that the public, the public nature of the super tall buildings can be optimized. And of course, we need to respect the past, that is, respect the inheritance. We need to think about the history, the past, the culture. We need to we need to protect the culture and history as much as possible and extend them in our new super tall buildings, in our agglomerations, so that the new spaces can have its cultural and traditional relevance. In this process, of course, we will choose technologies that are low carbon to help the entire region become more green and energy saving. This is about administration and management. It has to be guided by the government, and we need to have sophisticated management models and must have socially responsible teams. Next, I would like to share with you two cases. One is what we have done in Northbound in Shanghai in land plot number 55. It's it's at Haimen Road, number 55, which is the center of the bond. Famous historical sites such as the Tilan Chao region, Huangpu River, and the Second World War Jewish People Protection Zone are located in this area. It's, it's 240,000 square meters overground and 190,000 square meters underground. And the agglomeration includes 23 land lots, land lots, including some of the super tour and tour buildings in this region. And there are up to 18 buildings around the height of, of 100 meters. And there are two office buildings that are much higher than that, and a shopping mall. And these are important parts of the region, of this community. And we, ICA, participated in the design of the Northbound projects. And this project I'm talking about here is also participated by PCPA, Benoit, Arup, RFR, and other designing firms, some world's renowned designing institutes have participated in this project. In this urban agglomeration, we have the intention of integrating different concepts and functions so that this agglomeration will be multifunctional, including offices, com commerce, residence, culture, history, and landscape. So the large landscape puts everything together, basically, to help people fully enjoy the Huangpu River. We adopted the method of connection. That is, it is connected to other major buildings and the subway. And also, it has roof connection with greenery, with air footpaths, with the dock 
and with other public transportation networks, so that the agglomeration is a place where different functions can share and can achieve high efficiency together. It penetrates into different functions, like as you can see in the picture above, it goes all the way to the river bank of Huangpu River. And basically, it's because our area is orderly and effectively connected with the surrounding communities. And here, we would like to share things. We would like to create a public space for the city, including the rooftop park, outdoor theater, and some indoor public spaces like shopping malls and theaters and so on, so that the general public, the ordinary people, can enjoy this place and share this place. In this area, as you know, there is Tilan Chao, a historical site, which is quite f quite famous, and Xia Miao Hai Temple, and also the residential area for Jewish people in Second World War, and also some of the outstanding traditional buildings of Shanghai, Shi Ku Men. We want to give full play to such historical factors so that this agglomeration can be connected with the past as well as the future. In such a large project, we have adopted some of the technologies that we believe are applicable and appropriate. They are low carbon technologies. This is the shipyard project in North Bend. And the next case I want to share with you is the shipyard area development. It is near the Lu Jiazui Financial District. It's in the east to Lu Jiazui. It is headed by the government and is co-designed by KPF Technica and also my company ICA. Its overground space is more than 8 million square meters and underground up to 5.2 million square meters. It has offices, shopping malls, residence, cultural, and other functions. In this area, we would like to have coordinated development and have combination of functions and also protect the local history. And also because of its landscape, such as the river view, should be explored. And we believe Huangpu River is a great landscape. And also it is about sharing. It has a large riverside park, and which should be connected to our agglomeration. And because we have historical buildings from the shipyard, we should protect those those shipyard buildings, the historical buildings of the shipyard. So about the super tall agglomeration, the vertical urban agglomeration, we believe it's a, it's a topic we must pay attention to in China. It's not just a build, it's not just about single buildings, it's about the agglomerations. China has entered the stage of developing such agglomerations. We must have more integrated methods and techniques to give full play to the to different buildings and to the land land plots, the land lots and the local conditions, so that we can create more public spa public spaces to share with everybody. That's all for my presentation. Thank you.